I like I like the underdog in spots like that. Um, okay then, yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Bowls, bowls, bowls on the out of pocket pod. Uh, we ended the season forty three and thirty seven. So this is Tony, pretty proud to beat the juice. Next voice we hear is Ben. Howdy, 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 howdy. Yo, how's it going? How do you feel about this bowl season? You looking forward to this weekend? Um, I kind of think that there's not that many compelling bowls, actually. Um, normally, I'm pretty excited, and I'm going to watch as many as I possibly can. But there's very few, especially in this first weekend, that I'm really excited to see. Like, that comes much later in this calendar. Um, so I guess the answer to your question is no, not really. Interesting. I always look forward to that first Saturday of bowl action, but I usually have a few parlays working. But you know what? Hey, these bowls are different than they used to be. Like this transfer shit has changed everything. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even use any like bowl trends or like historical bowl shit. Like, I guess I'll still like the coaches who have good ball records, but other than that, yeah, I wouldn't put much stock in history. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what <clears> – <throat> I guess we should have done this in the pre-show prep. Um, the Action Network, which is kind of dumb, but they have um, they have a bowl opt-out tracker. So um, before each game, I will read the um, opt-out uh, transfer portal and injury situation. Thank you for that. That's better than my half baked memory and note that frankly I took them in too small a print can't even read half the fucking notes I took. Okay, here okay. we go. Let's get it going. We're gonna do this in daily order but in rotation order. You know I wanna do it in real rotation order. But people would think it was deranged to start with the Monday game. Yeah. So we'll start with rotation two zero three two zero four, the R and L Carriers New Orleans Bowl. That's right, Jacksonville State is laying two and a half on a total of fifty one and a half. They're playing the Rage and Cajun. And despite being the road favorite, I still like Rich Rod's side. This is one of only a couple games I like, to be honest. Who do you like in this spot? So, um, before I reveal that, um, here's who's not playing. So, for Jacksonville State, there's um, up, up their place kicker is in the transfer portal. Um, mm-hmm. They have a cornerback and a defensive end who've played more than 400 snaps who will be out. Uh, for the Raging Cajuns, a linebacker with more than 500 snaps will be out. A safety with 33 snaps will out or is out. Um, a left tackle, the starting left tackle, is out. Um, and a safety and a cornerback, both with greater than 500 snaps, are questionable. Just to set the stage. Um, I think... So Louisiana was one of the teams that I bet a Sun Belt future on this year, and they lost a lot of close one-score games. I think this is the kind of team that I'm going to want to back a lot next year. But Jacksonville State, this is their first bowl game in program history. Like Even though the Sun Belt has a higher quality competition, and I kind of like the Raging Cajuns, I mean, just I, I who is going to be more motivated? Like, I just it is clearly Jacksonville State. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the side I'm 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 leading with as well. And but you like, know Rich what? Is also a way better coach than Demerol. Ah, huh. ain't that the truth? Yeah, no, Rich Rod's got the coach of this match by far. I mean, here's the way I was thinking about it. I felt like the Cajun would be less engaged with this game than Jacksonville State. Yeah, precisely because, exactly. yeah, it's their first bowl game. But, um, but yeah, I uh, I don't know. 
I think that the Cajuns probably will move the ball, won't they? They'll probably move the ball. Maybe the over, over the over the 51 and a half was the better look at this game. Now I'm torn. I guess I like both those plays. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I like that as well. <clears throat> All right, then. All right, then. Very good. Rolling on ahead. Rotation 205-206. The avocados from Mexico, Cure Bowl. This one from Orlando. We got App State playing six and a half to the Red Hawks on a total of 44 and a half. I bet you like Miami O, don't you? I don't. Interesting. I'm on the Mountaineers. My heavens. That's a lot mm-hmm. to weigh with, with a Mountaineers team that, like, has not been – you know, that, like, explosive team from the past. Correct. Um, Again, let me go with who's out in this game. So, uh, Miami, oh, um, Brett Gabbert was out for the year. Um, He did not play in the MAC title game. Uh, Their number one wide receiver um, is injured but returned for the MAC title game. So, he's questionable in this contest. But now the <clears throat> the starting QB in the MAC title game, Avion Smith, is in the transfer portal. Um, he played a bunch last year, um, and a cornerback who played 87 snaps is out. Uh, for App State, uh, we've got defensive end, uh, the leading running back, um, and two wide receivers who've had more than um, 200 snaps are are out. Now the reason why I like okay the the reason why I like App State is twofold. You have okay. um a, a, a third string quarterback who's attempted five passes in college football is starting for this game for Miami O. No, really? Not not good. This is a Mac third string quarterback um and you were too busy getting your balls drained but as someone that watched the mac title game um avion smith did not look great and this backup couldn't beat out that guy it does not signal uh that this guy is is a cromulent qb um the uh, on the app state side like they played in an incredibly difficult um, division this year. Every single team in the Sun Belt East is bowling. <clears throat> Interesting. That, that's, yes, that's a lot better than the MAC East with Akron and Buffalo and Kent State. Like this is the the, the quality of competition is is far more robust. And App State also, you know. They went into overtime with North Carolina. They beat ECU, uh, lost to Wyoming by uh, one point. I mean, but in a one-score game um, that came down to the wire. Like I think overall this is a pretty solid team. And even in in the Sun Belt Championship game, they were hanging in there uh, for a while with with Troy. It was just some um, poor. Uh, Four goal line stands um, offensively that they just couldn't convert into touchdowns. Um, I think this is a pretty solid team. Um, And I kind of actually even like the fact that they've lost the conference championship game. I think this is an opportunity for them to have those 15 extra practices for bowl games, get kind of jazzed up and think about, um, you know, think about 2024, like kind of get realigned. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love App State. Um, I think this is easy peasy. I am more interested in the under, in the under 44 and a half than anything else. And I'll tell you why. Miami, it sounds like the Red Hawks are going to bring their defense down to Orlando. Right, like most of the, the, yes. the guy, like it's the offensive guy, that, the quarterback that's out, right, a couple guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, I feel like 
I, I'm going to expect a good defensive effort from the Mac team here. Uh, I like, yeah, I like them. I like them to play good. Uh, the, and App State's less explosive than in the past. They might move the ball slowly. I don't hate the idea of them pulling away, even though I thought you were going to take the point. I don't hate the idea of App State pulling away, but I don't know. If we got this third-string quarterback coming in, how many points are the Red Hawks really going to score? It's you know difficult I mean? to imagine they score more than 14. Like maybe there's a defensive I, uh, defensive score like at max 21. I think 14, 17 is more likely. Mm. Okay. Okay, then. Oh, oh, my goodness. By the way, I totally miss, like, read that – Misread that total in the last game. It's fucking fifty nine and a half in the Jacksonville oh. State game. I oh. totally misread that fucking total. So well, the, we'll just the, we'll the just, market is with you. Yeah. No, we'll just keep rolling on ahead. We'll stick. We'll stick with Jack State. Anyway, okay, under forty four and a half. Love that. Feels good. I can see this one. Yeah, I see this one coming down. 27-10 pretty easily. Ooh. Okay. 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 Next. I wish you the best of luck. Well, yeah, we'll see how it goes, brother. All right, next one up. Rotation 207-208. This is the Isleta New Mexico Bowl. This game in Albuquerque with New Mexico State laying four to Fresno State on a total. This total is 51. And, uh... Tedford is sick. I saw that. So he's out. Mm-hmm. Prayers up for him. Uh, and, and yeah, do, do you think you think the Aggies are just going to win this fucking game? Yeah, I kind of do. I just don't like the, th- the three in the hook. Um, so here, here, here's who's out for New Mexico State. Um, uh, wide receiver with 10 touchdowns. Another wide receiver with with 82 snaps, um, cornerback with 395 snaps, um, and another defensive back. For Fresno State, you got the backup QB, um, a safety with 282 snaps, a linebacker with almost 200 snaps, and then a, you know a, a linebacker with um, insignificant amount of snaps. Their starting left tackle um, was also a loss for the season. Um, and their starting defensive tackle uh, was limited to only four snaps over the, the final two games. Um, so okay, it, sounds bad. Yeah, it sounds it definitely sounds bad. The um, in if, if it wasn't for um, the Diego Pavia injury in the Conference USA uh, championship game, New Mexico State would have won. Um, so we might actually kind of be getting them at a discount. Apparently Diego is going to be playing. I think we're kind of getting them at a discount. If they beat Liberty, I would imagine their power rating would be, you know, somewhere like maximum three points higher than it currently is. I, I think we might be getting them at a slight discount. Like they really did deserve to win that game. Um, and it is in New Mexico. It is in New Mexico. Like, are the Fresno State fans going to be traveling? I'm, I'm just not sure. Um, I and mean, because Albuquerque, was, it's not a fun place to visit, is it? No, no. You know, it's not a great no. trip, Albuquerque. Although, if you live in Fresno, is that great? Ooh. Do you just take any excuse to get on the road there a bit? I don't know. Have you uh, I have you been to either? Have you been to either city? Dude, dude, you know how much fucking Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad I've watched. Are you serious? I know Albuquerque. Well, okay, okay. So the answer is I have not been to either city. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! You know, look, 
just like if you watch a lot of The Wire, you know Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Like, the city is a character in the show. Like, I mean, look, Albuquerque, kind of menacing. But but also Fresno, not great. I yeah, was, both cities know? are dumpy, to say the least. <laughs> You know, the Mountain West, yeah, has a real mix there of lovely places and, and, and uh, bits, of, bits of horribleness. Yeah, there's definitely more local pride in Albuquerque than there is in Fresno. They call it the ABQ. Well, well that's just the code for the airport, I think. Maybe, or maybe <laughs> that happens. To be the code for the airport, because that's what okay. they call the place. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> I fucking and, know. And, yeah. Um. What? Why would? I mean, Fresno is a better program, sure, but they're also. Um. There was a world where they were going to be in the Mountain West, uh, a championship game, and their season kind of fell apart, and. Now they got to go to the fucking New Mexico Bowl. They got to schlep to Albuquerque. Like, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm on the you New know, Mexico State side. I don't love it. But. I like the Aggies. I like the Aggies a lot. Yeah. The more and more I think about it, yeah, the Aggies are a really good side. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna fuck them up. They're gonna win this game. And they're gonna win this game in Albuquerque. It's uh. I feel like this is the best bet candidate. Let's put this one in our pockets here. Okay. Okay. Let's keep it keep it rolling here. Still on Saturday. This game Saturday evening. Rotation two zero nine two one zero. It's UCLA versus Boise State in the Starco Brands LA Bowl. The Bruins land. Bruins land four and a half. On a total of forty-eight and a half. I uh, shit. Do I? This is like all the favorites today. That's crazy. Why don't I want to take the place with Boise? I normally would, but I actually don't. Wait, what? Is, the total is not that high. The total is forty-eight and a half. Oh, I'm, I'm you're I'm mostly sorry. forty-eight and a half across the board oh. here. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I misremembered. Uh, um, no, no, I okay. thought I thought you were going to be outraged that it's no longer the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. I, I'm I'm furious. Uh, whatever Starco Brands is, do you think they make weapons to kill Palestinian children? Oh, I I assumed they like made gummy bears. <laughs> <sighs> oh man, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Oh, you uh, know, and, and, and you know, prayers up for them kids. Brain. Maybe, maybe Egypt could be a home for those children. Starco Brands. Starco Brands is an innovative branded packaged goods company that focuses on behavior changing products and disruptive consumer marketing. Whatever that means. Behavior changing. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Is that like jewel pod? <laughs> It's like get hooked on <laughs> nicotine. What do you mean behavior changing? <laughs> I, I, I don't <laughs> know. Fucking a. I oh, don't like this. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That's good. <laughs> that was a good intuition. Sinister. <laughs> a sinister group. Sinister. Present, okay. uh, presents Chip, Chip Kelly's pretty salty defense. That's what they um, present, right? Or are all those yeah. players not playing? Okay, so let me let, let me start with UCLA. Okay, QB Dante, uh, QB Dante Moore out. Um, athlete Keegan Jones, 105 snaps out. Wide receiver with over 300 snaps out. Tight end with over 300 snaps out. Backup guard out. Two safeties with over 350 snaps out. Um, a cornerback with uh, 614 snaps out. Uh, uh, defensive end with over 500 snaps out. Um, Even Garbers will be playing, even though he was injured in week 13. Uh, Defensive tackle uh, with 240-plus snaps. 
missed the two final regular season games with an injury, so he is questionable. DeAnton Lynn, the D.C., is um, at USC. And the QB coach, Ryan Gunderson, is at Oregon State. Um, and also, starting running back, Carson Steele, was uh, not spotted again at practice on Tuesday. That is just UC. That is just UCLA. Boise um, starting quarterback Taylor Green has transferred to Arkansas. The other backup QB is out for the season, so we have a uh, a third string true freshman quarterback CJ Miller. Um, so there you go. Um, in addition, Eric McAllister, the top wide, uh, wide receiver, will be out but Aston Gentry will be playing in this game. Um, kind of seems like the UCLA kids have quit. <laughs> Maybe I should like the Bruins. I, I mean, rather, the, the, the Broncos. Maybe I should be staying in the Bruins. I like, yeah, maybe. I, I think this is totally an, an underplay. Like, Mountain West true freshman QB – starting his first game and their top wide receiver is out. Like they're just going to run the ball with Aston Gentry, even if like the DC is gone and some top players are gone, they're just going to stack the box for with Boise. And I think UCLA will be lackadaisical. I think this is under 48 and a half really easily. Like the problem with taking with the points with the Broncos is with this, freshman QB, he might turn the ball over a couple times. You know, you you don't want to have that plus four in your pocket and his like, oh, he's fumbled three times. <laughs> you know? Mm. Very frustrating that. Very true. Yeah. Um, I think you just stick with the under here. I, I bet the under in this game. Okay. I, you know what? I'm with it. I'm with it. I like the under. I like it. I like that we're giving out a lot of under so far. The feel savvy. You always mm. feel savvy to be taken under. And uh and yeah, let's see if uh yeah, see if we got a little smothering going on in Los Angeles in the early evening on the East Coast. That game kicks off seven thirty by the way. Okay. Rolling on rotation two one one two one two the Radiant Technologies Independence Bowl. This game from Shreveport. Texas Tech Versus Cal, and, and uh, yeah, the Raiders playing three on a total of 56 and a half. I, uh, I guess I like the Red Raiders, but that's purely a hunch. Uh, oh, okay. What do you think Radiance Technologies does? Oh, I was assuming that they made Bob. I thought I, I, they were bomb people. It appears they make the software for the bombs. So here's here's a quick okay. word. Radiant supplies our cyber capabilities in novel and unique ways to support the intelligence community, armed, service, armed services, research laboratories, and test ranges. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it's I, 100% the thing, employee right? owned. So you got, you got that Love. for you. Love to see that. <laughs> Love to see that. At least they're very much invested in the bomb making. They're not alienated from it. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look, what are you going to do? There are bad guys in the world that need blowing up. Um, That's right. Why, why did I like – you know why I like tech? Because I feel like it's a short drive. I don't even know where Lubbock is. I just assume it's a reasonable drive to Shreveport from Lubbock. Where is Lubbock? Maybe, like, Texas is huge. That might be a fucking 10-hour drive. I don't even know. Lubbock is um, closer to New Mexico. That's probably a 10-hour a ten, a ten Yeah, hour drive. oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that's, never mind. So, kind of neutral site. Yeah, I have no lean in this game. Uh, let me see. With the uh, current traffic conditions, oh, that's not that bad. Only seven hours and 46 minutes. Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Uh, this is there's honestly too many players who have opted out for Texas Tech, um, and a lot for Cal to to really go over this. Um, okay. Uh, uh, key wide receivers are out. Um, uh, starting left tackle is out. Um. Baron Morton has been hurt for a lot of the game, for a lot of the latter part of the season. He's supposed to be playing, but he's not 100%. Um, uh, starting DT, starting safety, starting defensive end, and starting guard all are injured and probably not likely to play. Um, Cal, on the other hand, Ben Finley, the the two backup quarterbacks won't be playing. Um, the leading tackler won't be playing. Um, a high quality cornerback won't be playing. Um, so, yeah, but there's a, there's a lot of opt outs in this game. Given the opt outs, given the opt outs, I kind of like the dog here. There's just going to be more variants. Most likely, and like Cal is the type of program that is built to play for a bowl game. I guess they both are, right? They're both sort of middling programs. Cal Cal is definitely worse, but um, I felt like the expectations for Texas Tech were kind of higher this year. Um, so with with all the opt outs and a Cal team, which I think has been pretty decent, I I, I bet Cal on this one. Does this game mean more to Wilcox? An interesting question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which coach needs this game more. Um, I, I, I mean, it's my understanding McGuire's seat was hot for the Red Raiders, wasn't it? I think no. This is just the second year. Okay, then. All right. I mean, I, I wonder. I think both coaches need it. I think both coaches need it. I feel like motivation, like both programs should be wanting to win this game, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we can pass. We don't have to literally pick, have a pick in every game. Like, no, we well, can pass I, I, I am betting every single game. I have bet counting. <laughs> okay, noted. And I, and I bet, noted. And I bet the, and I bet the, there, the FCS games, there. too. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Very well. I'll take you head to head. I I okay. did end the season four and five versus you. So mm. so so let's see if I can catch up in the bowl season. Okay. And uh and yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, next one up, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Rotation two and three, two and four. This one, Georgia Southern. Laying three in the hook versus Ohio on a total of forty eight and a half. And, and I'm pretty sure Curtis Rourke is not playing. Curtis Rourke is not playing. C.J. Harris, their backup quarterback, who played in that San, San Diego State game that we watched together, is also out for the season. Oh, dear. Yeah. Curtis Rourke, uh, I saw it today, actually, um, after work, but before our recording, he is going to Indiana. Interesting. Yeah, with Kirk with Kirk uh Kirk Signetti from um from JMU. Interesting. I wonder how you no, know, that could work out. That could work out. Mm-hmm. Um other opt outs for the Bobcats. Starting wide receiver, starting runner running back, backup running back, a um replacement level wide receiver, um, and then a linebacker with more than six hundred snaps. Uh, for Georgia Southern, uh, there's a cornerback who's out, but he hasn't played since week seven. Leading rusher and starting um, linebacker um, didn't play in the regular season finale, so presumably they are questionable. To me, you know, I'm Mark. also taking I'm taking a similar approach here. Uh, the Sun Belt East was really fucking tough. Um, again, all those teams went bowling in the Sun Belt East, and Ohio 
the the Mac East is weak and and they're starting a third string quarterback and their top wide receiver and running back are gone. Um, I'm going with the Eagles. I would like to lay the alternate spread with the Eagles. I um I think the Eagles going to put it on them. Yeah, the more the the way you laid this game out, like the Bobcats going to be pretty toothless, you know. Like the Eagles should pull away. Yeah, yeah. They they yeah. finally got the, every reason to. The only sort of red flag with uh, Georgia Southern is this is a team that's that kind of shit the bed down the, down the stretch. Like they were in. Um, strong position to uh, represent that division in the conference championship game. Um, but their last few, they, they lost to App State at the end of the year. Before that, they lost to ODU. They lost to Marshall. They lost to Texas State. Um, so, you know, they're, they're on a little bit of a cold streak right now. But Maybe the way exactly they, what they but, need. but the way they won to get into bowl play was miraculous. What do you mean? Didn't Georgia Southern have a miraculous finish at the end of the season? To no. Get their sixth win. No, the, their last win was um, before Halloween. What? Yeah. Dude, what the fuck? We can't we can't lay the wood with this team. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you're thinking of Old Dominion. Oh my god, that's right. I am. You're thinking of Old Dominion. <laughs> okay, that's right. The next game. Yes, I love the next game. This is the famous toastery bowl. From Charlotte, hell yes. Rotation two hundred one, two hundred two. Old Dominion playing two and a half to Western Kentucky on a total of fifty four and a half. And that's right. I love the Monarchs. I think the Monarchs are more excited to be here, and they're gonna fucking play hard. The Toppers. This is not what they had in mind when the season started. Yeah, that's right. This is the spot I like. Who is out for everyone? Who's all out? Before before that, do you know what famous toastery is? I mean, oh, it has to be like a regional restaurant, man. What is it? Good call. It is a regional restaurant. Okay, good. It, Thank God. It, <laughs> it appears to be a diner bar hybrid concept not like a bar and uh mexican food like a chili's or a bar and steak like outback this is a bar diner concept interesting hey pancakes and beer i mean that's a way to get really fucking fat but I could easily be seduced. Yeah, yeah. It looks like they have they specialize in a lot of breakfast oriented alcohol. Um. Mm. Anyway, oh, a rum mosa, rum, orange juice, and champagne. Man, oh, that's gonna get you fucked up. Before you got what? food in your they tummy did not, for the Are you serious? Yeah. They, they're they just telling people to start a day with fucking rum. This, this shit is, they've got to out of control. This oh is the best God. ball game. This is the best ball game. <laughs> this is I also, game. yeah, no. I know, I wish I were a toastery equity holder. This seems like a good idea. I like this business. People are getting twisted. Oh, my God. But, yeah, the toppers. Uh, they don't want yeah. this smoke. Toppers don't want they, this. They, they don't stink. Need this. They, they suck this year. They, they, they performed poorly in a weak Conference USA. They stink. Um, uh, left guard in the transfer portal, center in the transfer portal, right guard in the transfer portal, cornerback in the transfer portal, 
uh, linebacker in the transfer portal, safety in the transfer portal, cornerback in the transfer portal, backup QB in the transfer portal. Um, like probably Malachi Corley is going to opt out. Um, wouldn't Austin Reed also possibly opt out? Um, so for the Monarchs, um, starting safety looks like a, a backup defensive lineman um, and th- three wide receivers um, will be out. And, oh, and they're starting punter. Interesting. The Monarchs oh. have a good punter. And the their star linebacker with 861 snaps and is the nation's leading tackler will also miss the game. That's a little sad. That's sad. That's a little sad. On the flip side, I mean, if if, if the if three of the offensive line are leaving, Austin Reed would be crazy to get under center in front of these replacements, right up behind these replacements. That's crazy. And their their offensive line was not good this year. Like they were giving up pressure from like Middle Tennessee State. I watched a lot of Conference USA. I watched a lot not of Conference USA. That's disingenuous. I watched a lot of Western Kentucky um, in October on those weeknight games. They were bad, bad football. They rack a discipline. Mm. You know, I buy it. I mean, I buy it. I, I don't, yeah. I like yeah. This is, give me Ricky Ronnie's side. Bad. This is yeah. This give me Ricky Ronnie's side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Give us the monarch. That's really yeah. it's a strong play. It's a cheap lay, and they're gonna they're gonna put it on them. Yeah, this, if I can put it Western on them, Kentucky like, has been bad. Has been really disappointing. Really bad. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is ridiculous. Rotation 215-216. It's the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl. UTSA playing 13 on a total of 52 and a half, 53. I don't know. I like I like the Roadrunners, but I like the Roadrunners to end the season. And 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 I was I felt wrong. Mhm. Um, the runners, the cornerback that's been uh, injured since week nine won't, is in the transfer portal, and um, their defensive end, the AAC Defensive Player of the Year, Trey Moore, is in the transfer portal. But that's it. Uh, on Marshall, starting QB, Cam Chancer, Cam Fancer, excuse me, uh, is in the transfer portal. Chad Pennington's son will be the backup. Um, the center, starting center, is in the transfer portal. Uh, top wide receiver is in the transfer portal. Uh, replacement level tight end is in the transfer portal. Um, the tight ends coach. Uh, hired, oh, this says they have a new offensive coordinator. And um, the starting safety missed the, the last two games. Um, and it is likely that Rasheen Ali, the stud running back, will um, opt out. My only problem is Marshall is a team that fucks me up. Marshall is like Georgia State. Almost every time I'm on them, they shit the bed. Every time I fade them, I... I, I have to eat some crow. So that's mm. my only challenge in this game. I went under uh, thinking thinking that perhaps um, a backup quarterback and a couple studs in Marshall won't be able to do too much. I would imagine that uh, – yeah, I kind of think this might be a UTSA that lays it on them and then takes their foot off the gas in the third quarter. I think this might be like, you know, 40-something to seven. 
let me ask you this. Why is Jeff Trailer coming back? Not good. You think that's not good? Yeah, that's not good. I mean, I thought it was I I mean, I thought it was neutral, but people were acting like it was bullish. I don't know. No, I think it's negative. I think it's negative for the man. I think it's going to he's going to be like Matt Campbell and just like stuck in that job. Like no longer the hot name stuck in that job. I don't think you should consider San Antonio as a place to be stuck. Like it's a great city. Have you ever been there? Well, I watch a lot of the NBA playoffs. So I've uh-huh. seen a bunch of the features about the city. Uh-huh. You see how There's... I gathered stuff about the world? I use television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the uh, is it coincidence that this the only time this program has been good is when Frank Harris has been the QB and he has run out of eligibility? He's not able to play in the bowl game. Okay. No, I think he is. But he's, oh, okay. I'm just talking about next year. Right. Yeah. Like, they, they, they're going to lose a lot of pretty good guys. Um, I, I kind of think this, like, three-year run is – or actually, yeah, three-year run is going to – no, they, they were kicking butt in 2020, so this four-year run is really going to come, come to an end. Hey, so you're saying the wise move would be to skedaddle and let a hard rain fall on the next guy. Exactly. You know? Hey, there's probably something to that. Well, that definitely makes me rather late than take it because this is going to be his finest hour. Hand. Yeah. All right. All right, we got one more here. The RoofClaim.com Boca Raton Bowl, rotation 217-218. Syracuse, having fired Dino, is laying three to South Florida. I don't know. I, 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 feel, like, I feel like it's wrong team favored. Um, total 64 and a half, by the way. Anyway, um, or rather 61 and a half. Anyway, uh, what do you like? Uh, I have not bet this game yet because I cannot bet it in the state of New York, um, and oh, I don't man. think I'm going. And I don't think I'm going to make it to New Jersey or Connecticut over the course of the next week. Um, but that may change. Um, I also think it's wrong team favor too. Like what? It, you you. This is the first time USF has been ball eligible since we started this pod. Like they, mm-hmm. they have a really decent, they're a decent team that can score a lot of points. Like Syracuse has has no stars. Not really. There's there's all this turnover. Like what's the? I I don't get it. If this if this was a like um if this was going to be the fucking pinstripe bowl if this is going to be in the Northeast I would take Syracuse, but like. There's going to be a, a, you know, a lot of excitement locally. Like these, I, I guess the Syracuse kids are going to enjoy their trip to Florida, but like, do they do they really care about this bowl game? I, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so for Syracuse, Dino's out. Uh, defensive coordinator is out. Starting DE is out. Um, Garrett Trader is supposed to be healthy. A couple other guys banged up. Um, USF, Gary Bohan, the backup, uh, is in the transfer portal. And um, a safety that started in the middle of the season um, is uh, also in the transfer portal. Uh, Injuries, uh, left guard, uh, starting left guard, and starting right guard uh, didn't play in the last game. So hopefully they're they're healed up. You know that's that's always a good sign. 
the fewer players in the transfer portal, that tells you everyone on the team is excited to be going to play this game. Yeah. Yeah. The wrong, wrong team is favored. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. The Bulls, yeah. Expect the Bulls to win this game. That's a, you know, you know something, maybe you should make it over to the Jersey side of the river and, and get this action down on the money line. You should think about that. I should. I should. I you know, should. and, and it, you know, it's like it's an easy excuse to hang out. And, you know, also you'll feel good about, you know, getting this bet in there. Um, are you around Saturday? Okay. Now, wait. Before no. we wrap up, best wait, bet are you around Saturday? ultimate – it, yeah, yeah, but like we're but before we wrap up, okay. that's that old Dominion, and were we thinking about the Jacksonville State Gamecocks or the New Mexico State Aggies at all? Uh, let's do Aggies, double best bet. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Aggies and Monarchs 